Okay, everybody, a little sneak peek inside our week 11 case studies. This is an extra one that has been downloaded inside the course. Let's go through a couple of them here. So I have focused on the intraoral and the extraoral examination because I find that is what students struggle with the most. Um, so let's go through a couple questions just to give you guys an idea of what's coming up. So let's do the first one here. So a 28 year old patient visits your dental clinic complaining of pain and swelling in the area just below their um, jawline. On examination, you notice a tender enlarged mass on the left side. Which set of lymph nodes is most likely affected? The occipital, the auricular, the cervical chain, or the supraclavicular? <laughs> These are always hard things to say. So feel free to stop the video if you need to think about it. I'm going to go through the answer in the next slide. So it's the cervical chain lymph nodes. So let's explain this a little bit for you. So I have the rationale down here. So the patient's symptoms of pain and swelling in the area below the jawline are suggested um, suggestive of an enlarged lymph node in the cervical chain. The cervical chain nodes are a group of lymph nodes located along the sides of the neck and under the um, jaw. This is very, very important. So, which can become tender and swollen in response to infections or inflammation in the, in the head and neck. Even if you're just simply sick, this can happen. Um, so going through the other ones in case you might have thought that was the correct answer. So the, the occipital nodes, that's not the answer because those are located at the back of of the head. The auricular nodes are located around the ears. The supraclavicular nodes are located above the clavicle. So totally different and they are not likely to cause pain and swelling in this certain area that we talked about. So anytime you go through a case studies question, while you're studying, if you say you were going through the answers A, B, C, and D, and you said to yourself, what are the occipital nodes again? I suggest stopping and going back to study the occipital nodes so you won't forget it if this type of question is asked on the board exam. And same things for the other ones too. Let's say you didn't know what any of these were because you forgot to study the lymph nodes. Well, this is going to be on the board exam. Not this exact question, of course, but they love to ask about lymph nodes. So go back and restudy that if you had any problems. This is what case studies are meant for. They're meant to really test your knowledge and critical thinking. Would you guys like to go through another one? Let's go through a little bit further down the slides here. So a 25 year old patient complains of a prominent band of tissue that restricts their tongue movement and causes a gap between the anterior lower teeth. What structure is likely causing this condition? A, B, C, or D. So the sublingual caruncle, the sublingual fold, the lingual frenum, or the submandibular duct. So same thing. If you're going through these and you go, shoot, what is the lingual frenum again? I know the other ones, but what is this one? Go back to your notes, study that have a look inside our modules because I have it right there for you and then you will be able to take a better um, um, guess if you will at what the answers are when you're going through case studies don't just pick an answer for the heck of it really put your mind in like a board exam mode think okay if I was writing the board exam right now what answer would I pick and would you get it right? So feel free to stop the video if you need to think about the answer a little bit more. So the answer is C. So I explain it a bit too. So the patient presents of a prominent band of tissue that restricts tongue movement and causes a gap between anterior lower teeth is characteristic of a tight or hypertrophic um, lingual um, frenum. This is a band of connective tissue that extends from the floor of the mouth to the midline of the of the undersurface of the tongue. When the um, frenum is too tight or attaches too close to the tip of the tongue, this can lead to a different condition. So I go through everything here for you. So you don't just get the answer, but I explain why the answer is the most correct. But also I talk about the other ones too, in case you did have that as the answer. So you kind of know where you went wrong and what you need to restudy. So I hope hope this helps you guys check out the rest of that case study good luck and let me know if you guys have any questions